Well, I, I got to say I feel honored to follow that because I think we have the same story to tell. So uh, my name's William, and, and this is what I know. I know that education can change the world, and I hope that you believe that too. And I've been in, in the field of education for 16 years, and I've seen that for my own life, and I've seen it with people I've worked with and, and who, what they went on to do. And I'd like to share a program with you that's doing that with students all over the world. But before we start and understand what AVID's about, I need to see a show of hands. And I'm just doing this to take a check of who we are. It's not to marginalize anybody, it's to take a pulse. So if you would, with both hands in the air, hopefully you've got deodorant on, what I'm going to ask you to do is this. How many people in this room went to university here, however you're defining that? Went to university. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you. Do you know, in some communities, if I asked that, there wouldn't be a single hand in the air. I just think that's important to say. Let's try it this way. How many people in here, with both hands in the air, hopefully you have deodorant, uh, are the first members of your family, however you're defining that, to go to university? First members of your family. Number drops a bit. Okay, now I teach at a university, so uh, let's try this one. How many people in here felt like if you went to university, you were prepared? What I mean, you knew how to take notes, be organized, you know how to study, you knew what was expected. When you actually walked on the campus, you knew what was going to happen, you knew how to apply for a major, whatever it is. How many people in here felt prepared, completely prepared? Numbers drop. That's what I thought. For most of my students I work with today, I'd say there'd not be a lot of hands in the air. Now, to understand AVID, I got to share with you something first, and that is the idea of weightlifting. Now, let me tell you something. You know this. If you want to gain muscle, what you need to do, one strategy is to actually lift what? Weights. You have to lift weights, right? And if you work with a coach, she or he actually can teach you better how to lift weights and you gain muscle. And actually, the more weights you lift, over time, you gain more muscle. It's the firing of the muscle that creates you to become strong. But in school, we do something different because we know if you get your brain to fire or your heart to fire or your spirit to fire, you learn. Learning's not just up here, even though we think it is. So what we do in school, and I was a teacher, so I know what we do. I visit schools all over the place. We do two things. If you come to school and you've got a lot of muscle, we put you in classes often with other kids with a lot of muscle. And then we give you more weights to lift, and you walk into school and you graduate, and often you do. When you graduate, you feel really strong. So we put you with the same kinds of students, or we put you into schools where everyone has muscle. And we put more muscle and weights on you, and you come out as strong. But there's other kids who come to school, and they don't have a lot of weights, or I should say they don't have a lot of muscle. And we say, oh, they can't lift a lot. And so we put less and less weights. And when they graduate from school, and many times they don't, they're not very strong. And what students do is they say, oh, I must not be very strong. Actually, what they say is, I'm not very smart. Only school sometimes makes you feel not very smart. So let me give you an example of what Avid does because there's a different way. Now, I promised Stephen I was not going to get emotional. I told him his story. So, Stephen, I'm trying here. Stephen Zamora, he was my former AVID student years ago. Uh, Stephen could be any AVID student around the world. There's 400,000 AVID students with teachers all over the world. I'm just lucky to tell the story. Here's Stephen. Stephen was that student in the back of the room who showed up every day, kind of quiet, did all his work. Uh, nothing personal, Stephen, but if he didn't show up, sometimes we'd forget because we're so busy dealing with other students. And when you asked Stephen, no one in his family had gone to university. So he said, Stephen, apply for this program. Not apply, join us. And in year eight, he did. He agreed to stay from year eight to year 12. He did. And this is what we did with Stephen, talking about weightlifting. The first thing we did with Stephen is we put him in those classes, not all of them, but some, where there was a lot of weights being lifted. And what we did in AVID is we supported Stephen, like we do in all AVID programs. The first thing we did is we taught Stephen organizational skills. Let me give you an example. We taught Stephen, we actually mandated, we encouraged, we supported, we said, you got to take Cornell notes, that's what they're called, in every class every day. And we graded them. We taught him how to keep an organized binder that every Friday we, we graded. And if there are loose papers in his backpack or in his notebook, he actually lost points in AVID. So we supported him with organizational skills. We had university tutors who came in twice a week to run something we call AVID tutorials. It's not one-on-one, -on -one, it's a group of of students with a tutor, a university tutor, who's coaching students to lift the weights in those rigorous courses. We invited his parents, who probably taught us more than we taught him, them, but they came in twice a year, and we ran avid back-to-school nights and taught them how to apply for university. We said, here's the scholarship, just apply for this thing, and guess what they did? We took Stephen and, the, and his, stu his colleagues to universities all over the region. I know I've been on a bus all over Southern California, Arizona, and Nevada, where I taught avid in the States. So when Stephen applied, not only did he know where he was going, but he had been on the campus numerous times. Our AVID curriculum, what AVID curriculum is, is actually teaching you the codes of school, 
how to read a textbook, time management. We actually had Stephen apply for scholarships every single year that he was in AVID, so that when he actually had to apply for them, he had a whole list that he could apply for, and he got scholarships. This would happen to Stephen. Stephen's grades went like this. Now, year nine, year 10, he had like C's or D's, that kid in the, in the middle, and you'll see something went on for Stephen. We call that the J-curve. We call that success over time. Now, we love to test in schools. Well, people like to test us, and what they do is they test, like year nine, test, 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 and they would probably say to me, William, you're failing as an avid teacher, but a J-curve is success over time, and you'll notice that his grades went to A's and B's, but what's remarkable about Stephen's grades, like most avid students around the world, is he was in year 11 and 12, the hardest classes that were available on the high school campus, senior college. That's success over time. What happened to Stephen? Stephen uh, went off to university, went to graduate school also. He became a tutor. Here's one of our tutorial sessions. He became a tutor twice a week. He'd come in. Now, this is an, actually a great model because usually Stephen would be sitting here. One of the avid students would show a question they had, and all the students would be weightlifting together to solve the problem. But he had to go up to show an example here. So, uh, let me show you this. This is what the research says. The research suggests that rigorous curriculum is a greater factor in determining university graduation rates than class standing, standardized test scores, or grade point averages. What does that mean? It means this. It means the more weights you lift before you get to university guarantees, I should say, suggests, but it guarantees many times, that you will get through university. It means if you want to go to the Olympics, you actually have to start training for the Olympics early on, year seven, year six. And you work with a coach. That's the avid teacher. Those are the avid tutors. Those are your avid colleagues. The more muscle you have, the greater the chances of you getting through. And our research says that avid students are getting through faster and faster, faster than their peers that weren't an avid. Let me show this with you. Okay, so uh, this is the exciting part. Avid started in one class in San Diego, California. That's where I'm from. I'm here now, but that's where I'm from, by a teacher, Mary Catherine Swanson. And she came up with this idea because she saw these kids that weren't doing very well, didn't have a lot of muscle. She started this program with one class, 30 students. Today, 30 years later, there are 400,000 Avid students all over the world in some 4,000 schools. She knew something was going on. Now, what she knew is this. Not that her students were gummy bears. No. Okay. She knew this. She saw, like most teachers do, is we've got programs for students who've got a lot of muscle on their body, and often we give them the best teachers, by the way. We give them the best teachers. And then there's, there's programs for students who aren't doing very well. They don't have a lot of muscle. Often, they're the ones that aren't coming to school. We spend a lot of time trying to help them out, and we should. But there's a, we call this the missing middle. We call that the academic middle. It's those Stevens who are quiet and kind of doing it, have mediocre grades, C's, maybe a D once in a while. And what I notice, every time I tell the speech, I'm like, yeah, that's true, we're missing a whole group of students that we forget. And what we do in AVID is we target that group. Those are coming from communities who do not have a history of going to university. Low income, kids of color, sometimes family stuff's going on with family, and this is what happens. Now, one of the things Mary Catherine Swanson did is she kept data, and if I had three hours, I would just do a thing about data, because you'd be blown away. I have nine minutes left, so here we go, okay? So here's the rates of acceptances for our AVID students, 400,000 around the world. What's so remarkable about that acceptance rates are these are students from communities where most of their family members have never been to university. That's like saying to a student, you know, go do the car race, but you've never been in a car, and you've never met anybody who's ever had a car before. We actually show them cars, and look what happens. So let's try this. There's uh, Christian Garcia. He was a former avid student of mine. He started in year seven, and then I got him senior college years, high school, years eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I got to work with him, or he worked with me, I think, sometimes. And uh, he took the most rigorous courses on our high school campus, went to university, major university. I probably couldn't have gotten into that university. This is him in the Peace Corps today trying to give back. He's in Cambodia. He emailed me. This is what he said. And I promise I'm not going to get emotional. I'm just going to be like this when I read it. That's what he says, okay? Chris says this. As a child growing up with overwhelming disadvantages, I'll try. <laughs> Ava was the only group that not only told me what I was capable of, but showed me what I was capable of. Without it, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I love that it's in capitals. It's amazing when you actually give kids weights and then teach them how to lift it, what happens? When it's not a game, it's not some lottery that some people have the codes. That's what Nellie said. 
And they said, Avid helped me feel better about myself. It was the first time I felt the love of a family that truly loved and appreciated my input and abilities. I love how we genuinely listen to each other. Those moments in group study sessions were heaven. You know, I get choked up because uh, those tutorials were transformative for her because someone listened to her and her grades went through the roof. So let's try the ex excitement stuff. Steven's in law school today. I talked to him on Skype. I said, Stephen, what do I tell everybody? He said, Dijon, my last name, Dijon, tell him, in year eight, you all were preparing me for law school because the same things we do in law school is what we were doing in AVID. I just didn't know it was law school. And he said, even though it's really challenging, it's a different kind of rigor, I already had the muscles. And I'm doing the exact same things you asked me to do in AVID. And Stephen is just one story of 400,000. So let's do this. This will work for me. Okay, so this is why I'm here. And I'm hoping that you know somebody. You're going to spread the word for us because we need your help. I was fortunate enough to be teaching at Charles Sturt University in Albury, and I would fly home, home, uh, wherever that is anymore, back to the States. And in the States, we have avid conferences around the United States where 20,000 teachers from all over the world come to get trained in avid methodologies. Their entire work is to make sure their students get to university and learning the codes of how to do it. So I was going back, and a team from Wodonga called me and said, can I go with you? Can we go? And there was a teacher. Are there any teachers in the house? Okay, so maybe you'll nod when you hear this. If you're a teacher, you are so sick of change, you are just going to go crazy if you hear someone say about something else in education. And I know this because I am one. And a teacher went with me, Will Playton. He got off the plane, he looked like this. Will Playton. And I thought, oh, this is not going to go very well. And the first day of the conference, he just was like this the whole time. I thought, oh, this is not going on. Day two, he walked in, he looked at me, he goes, William, let the revolution begin. <laughs> That's what Will said. So here's Will. Here's Will. Recent article. Okay, here's Will. Mary Catherine Swanson, one class, 30 students, 400,000 today. Will. First AVID program in, in Australia. Will. He found 17 students on his campus. There's more. Who he thought, let's try it, year nine. This year, in years eight and nine, he has almost 100 students. He called me on the road as I'm driving to Canberra. He said, William, guess what? Not only in November we're training all the staff in AVID methodologies, but all the primary and elementary schools are coming on board, and the universities are coming to check this out. Next year, there'll be over 400 students in the program. Nobody in the families have gone to university. They'll be the first. In two weeks, those students are taking the train over, overnight. They're coming to my university, Macquarie, where they're touring the university. For some, first time they've ever been to, a, to Sydney. They're going to show them the codes of school. So, this is what it looks like. You're right. Mm. I used to sit in the back of this classroom, quiet, in a little learner corner, and I used to just doodle little pictures, I don't know, cat stick figures, that kind of stuff. I used to get C's and D's sometimes, if I was very, very lucky for the subject I got, an A, but that's really rare. But this year, well, <laughs> this year is really great. Um, I got A's, B's, and sometimes C's, but that's a class I don't like. <laughs> um, everything is so easy because of AVID. What else was I <laughs> Well, t talk about, I guess, <laughs> what are some of the things in AVID specifically that we do um, that's helped you? Um, the binder has helped me with the corner notes, summaries, um, putting our main ideas down, um, and asking questions, and, and just telling the teacher afterwards they've done the lecture. Um, and just getting it all organized from your goal setting to your day planner to your subjects and then referring back to them if need help. Um, the tutorials, other tutorials are great. I can come in with a question and I don't know or understand and I just actually just yeah, get help from everyone. Everyone contributes. Um, and just sit together and work as a team and that's really building my confidence talking to a group of you know we have a uh, we have banquets for the avid families and her family came up to me and said you know what avid did is he, avid gave me gave us our daughter back because she was not who we just saw right there so i'd like to end with this if i might Here's my dream in education, and I'm a, I teach in the field of education. My dream is we eliminate a few words, if you would help me. Words like motivation, because we say, you know, just those kids, if they're just more motivated, 
Or the other word we use, we use this one a lot, you know, the intelligent kids. We say, well, if they're just smarter, the smart kids will figure this out. Or we say a lot like this, we go, you know, not everyone needs to go to university. And my response is, well, let that student at year 12, who's now prepared, make that decision, rather than decide that at year 7 with what we do. That's my goal. That's my dream. And so this is where I say my plea to you. The federal government's goal is to increase enrollment of underserved communities who are really avid throughout the nation. And they're trying to figure out how to do it. Now, if you all know the prime minister, could you let her call me, please? I will fly up here on my own dime. I'll just say, if you're listening, please don't reinvent the wheel because we've been doing it for 30 years. We're doing it here, and it's changing the course of people's lives. So thank you so much for letting me be here.